Hey, this is Mr. Perez. Today we're going to work on solving equations part two. This is just too good. Anyway, before we get started, let's get out Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, ready to go? Yeah. All right, we're doing solving equations part two. Woohoo! All right. Well, here we go, Charlie, right there. Solving equations part two. First, we're going to do a clearing fractions review, or some people call this kung fu fractions. What we're going to learn here is how to clear fractions when you have a number in front of a, a fraction being multiplied where the denominator divides evenly into that whole number. Watch. You'll see what I mean right now. Let's go ahead and review from pre-algebra. Let's write the 8 as 8 over 1, and this is being multiplied times 3 fourths. Well, notice the 8 and the 4 will reduce. They have a common factor of 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And notice, in the numerator, we have 2 times 3, which is 6. And in the denominator, it's 1 times 1, which is 1. Anything divided by 1 is itself, so we can disregard that 1 in the denominator. And the answer is 6. What we want to learn to do very concisely is to do those steps in one compact step up here. Watch. It's the same thing. We can think, okay, 4 goes into 8. How many times, Charlie? 2. 2. Or you can think 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. 6. That's our clearing fractions technique. So that's how we kung fu fractions. So let's go ahead and do this expression over here. We have the number 8 being multiplied to the difference of 3 fourths and 5 eighths. Well, by the distributive property, we're going to go ahead and distribute the 8 to the 3 fourths, bring down your subtraction, and distribute the 8 to the 5 eighths. Well, notice 8 was the lowest common denominator for those two fractions that were in the parentheses, right? Therefore, we know that LCD is going to be divisible by those denominators, right? So here it comes. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Bring down your subtraction. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 1 times 5 is 5. And 6 subtract 5 is 1. So this is a technique we're going to use to make it easier on ourselves when we solve equations that have fractions in them. We're going to kung fu those fractions right out of there. Watch. Okay, Charlie, so we're going to solve the following equation. Don't get scared. Here it comes. Just use the force, Charlie. Just relax. Okay. Now, the first thing you're going to do is find the lowest common denominator for all your fractions. Just don't look at the left. Don't look at, just don't look at the right. You've got to include all your fractions. We want the LCD, which is the smallest number that all of our denominators divide evenly into. And what is it? 6. That's right, 6. So we're going to multiply both sides of our equation by 6, right? And we have to use what property on the left-hand side? Distributive property. Distributive property. So we have 6 times 3 halves times x. Don't forget, 3 halves x means 3 halves times x. Subtract 6 times 5 thirds equals 6 times 1 6. So now we're ready to come for our fractions out of there. Watch. Okay, so let's start right here. What's 6 divided by 2, Charlie? 3. And 3 times 3 is? 9. 9. So let's put our answer up there. But don't forget, it's 9 times x. Don't forget you have an x there, so it's 9x over there, right? Okay, we have a subtraction. Now, 6 divided by 3 is what, Charlie? 2. And 2 times 5 is? 10. Very nice there, Charlie, on the right-hand side. 6 divided by 6 is? 1. And 1 times 1 is? 1. one. So there you go. So see, using this clearing fractions technique, we clear the fractions out. There's no more. And see, a black belt in Kung Fu math will Kung Fu those fractions right out there and go from the original problem straight to that one there in one step. And you've got to work up to that. Remember, you can't start Kung Fuing until you know what you're doing. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to get beat up. Anyway, let's get to work, Charlie. Now, what do we do now? Add 10 to both sides. Add 10 to both sides. That leaves you with 9x on the left, 11 on the right. And to get the 1x, we divide both sides by what? 9. That's right. And so we get x equals 11 ninths. Very good. Whew. Let's do another one. Here we go, Charlie. Solve the following equation. Don't get scared. Here it comes right there. Just relax, okay. Notice you only have two fractions, a, a 5 fourths and a 1 half. What's the lowest common denominator? 4. That's right. So we've got to multiply both sides by 4 and apply the distributive property, which basically means every individual term will get multiplied by a 4 because of the distributive property. So we'll go ahead and go straight to that step by saying, okay, we first begin with 4 times 2x, subtract 4 times 5 fourths, equals 4 times 1 half times x plus 4 times 3. 
So there you go, right? We multiplied both sides by four and distributed. Now, Charlie, what's four times two x? Eight x. That's right, subtract. What's four divided by four? One. And one times five is? Five. Five, okay, bring down your equal sign. Go to the right-hand side. What's four divided by two? Two. And two times one is? Two. But don't forget, it's two times x, right? Okay, and then we have a plus 12. Now, let's go ahead and put our work up there. Now notice we got variables on both sides, so we're going to isolate our variable on the left-hand side by doing what, Charlie? Subtract 2x. Subtracting 2x to cancel them out on the right, and so 8x subtract 2x is 6x, subtract 5, right-hand side is 12. Now what, Charlie? Add 5. Add 5 to both sides, that's right. We still got to isolate the variable on the left-hand side, so we're adding 5s to get rid of that subtract 5. Those cancel out. We have 6x on the left. Right-hand side, 12 plus 5 is 17. And now finally, to get the 1x, we do what to both sides, Charlie? Divide by 6. That's right. And so we finally get x equals 17 over 6. Whew. Right? Anyway, let's do another one, Charlie. Here we go. We got one more to go. Solve the following equation. Don't get scared. There it is, right there. Now, notice this equation has decimals. Actually, this equation is from the applied problems that we're going to be do, doing very soon. This is specifically the coin problems. This represents the problem where you have nickels and quarters, and the whole pile of coins adds up to $2.40, and you have 12 coins altogether. So we're going to be doing these equations uh, shortly, a couple of sections down the road. Now, Charlie, now from pre-algebra, 0 0.05 is what fraction? Five hundredths. Five hundredths, that's right, because the five is in the hundredths place. The 0.25 is what? Twenty-five hundredths. 25 hundredths, right? And that is multiplied to the 12 subtract x. Now the right-hand side is a mixed number, 2 and 40 hundredths. And if you change it to an improper fraction, you'll get 240 over 100. Well, the reason I'm showing you this is because we want to learn to clear decimals. And remember, decimals are just fractions, okay? So looking at the fractions, Charlie, what's the lowest common denominator? 100. 100, that's right. Now what happens when you multiply a decimal by 100? It moves it to the right. It moves the decimals two places to the right, correct? And so if you, if you multiply each term by 100, the decimals move two places to the right. If you multiply each of these fractions by 100, those denominators get canceled out, right? And so in either way, you'll end up with the equation 5x plus 25 times 12 subtract x equals 240. That's the kung fu fraction technique or kung fu decimal technique, right? So anyway, let's go through the steps. You'll see. I'm going to go step by step here. The first thing we're going to do is Multiply both sides of our equation by 100, which means each term gets multiplied by 100. So we have 100 times 0 0.05 times x plus 100 times 0 0.25 times the quantity 12 subtract x, and that equals 100 times 2.40. Now remember, multiplying a decimal by 100 moves the decimal place two places to the right. So we'll first start with 100 times 0 0.05, and that gives you what, Charlie? Five. five, but don't forget, it's five times x. Now for the next part here, 100 times 0 0.25 is what, Charlie? 25. It's 25 times the quantity 12 subtract x. So in the next step is where we're going to distribute the 25 to the 12 subtract x. Remember, when you're doing multiplication, you must work left to right. So we did 100 times 0.25, wrote that down, brought down our work, and then in the next step we'll distribute. Okay, right-hand side is 240, right? Okay, now, let's bring down our work, 5x, now let's distribute the plus 25 through the tough one, Charlie. What's 25 times 12? 300? Very nice there, Charlie. Now, how about 25 times a negative 1x? Negative 25x. And that's right, right-hand side is 240. Now, what comes next, Charlie? Combine like terms. Combine like terms. What's 5x plus a negative 25x? Negative 20x. That's right, bring down your work. Now, let's put our work up there. Negative 20x plus 300 equals 240. What do we do next, Charlie? Subtract negative 300. That's right. That cancels out, leaves you with a negative 20x on the left. And 240 subtract 300 is a negative 60. Now bring us home, Charlie. What do we do? Divide by negative 20. That's right. Divide both sides by negative 20 to get the positive 1x. And x would be 3. So that is our answer there. Now, anyway, that's some good practice. Now we've got to do another section called Solving Equations Part 3. Oh, what fun. We'll see you.